This is Huawei's new revised MateBook X Pro. So the 2021 model here has a few little minor tweaks and changes, but essentially the design is the same as it was before. So 13.9 inch screen, touch screen on this one. It's really good. Very nice backlit keyboard. Touchpad's great, and it has a battery capacity of 57 watt hours, which does last for up to about nine hours in my testing of light use. So what has changed is the CPU mainly, and the cooling, they've done some changes to the cooling. So we now have, with this one, the chipset is powered, this model with the Core i7, it is the 1165G7. It is paired up with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte MVME drive. Now it has the Iris XE graphics, which is a step up from the UHD graphics that we used to have before. So in this in-depth review, I'm gonna go over this in a lot of detail. We'll take a detailed look at the screen. I'll tell you what the keyboard's like, the performance, and exactly what you can expect out of this 2021 refresh. The MateBook X has an excellent weight. It is just 1.31 kilos. And if I add the charging cable and the charger here, our total carry weight is 1.51. So with the 65 watt charger, to charge the 57 watt hour battery, it will take about one hour and 30 minutes. So very thin, this is around 14 millimeters. And up the front here, we have two microphones. So the dual array mics, this is a change they made, and these are higher quality microphones. Then on the right, we do have a type A port USB 3.2 Gen 1, I believe it is. And it's good to see that we do have a full size port at least. And this is what I use to plug in my wireless receiver for my mouse. On the left, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support, two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a status LED. So when it is charging, you can use both of these ports here. It's blinking when charging and a continual white LED once it's fully charged. So this color is the emerald green, they call it. It's actually a very nice color, I do like it. Now it's a matte finish on this with the paint job and it does tend to pick up a few little fingerprints and smudges I have noticed with this. Huawei, this is not a sticker, this is actually embossed into the um, alloy on the top of this so you cannot remove that and it's not offensive, doesn't stand out that much too with it. So lifting it up here, this can be opened one-handed no problems there at all. We greet it with a very nice keyboard. No real changes compared to the previous models here. The camera is still the pop-up one. I'll give you a sample of that later on. Sadly, the quality of that has not improved. And really, I would wish that they would move this and put it into the top bezel and fit that in there. I'm sure they can do that Huawei. I mean, after all, they make some of the best tech. I mean, look at their foldable phone, the tech that's in that. They'll be able to do that. So fingerprint, Read it slash power on button works very good. So you can use this for Windows Hello to get straight into the desktop. Now, very shallow travel on these keys here, uh, about 1.4 millimeters of travel. They are very quiet keys to type on, so they don't make a lot of noise or anything like that. There's no rattle. The touchpad does not rattle when typing away on the keyboard and very, very little flex pressing down here quite hard. So my time using this now, I've had it for a couple of weeks and been using it on and off in between other tech. I find it a very comfortable keyboard, great to type on. This is the UK layout here. That's why we have a different shift key. There's no US layout apparently with this one. So this touchpad, very smooth finish to it, very good accuracy. It has again, a very shallow left and right. So just like the shallow travel we have with the keys, the same goes with the left and right mouse buttons, supports gestures and the final little movements like selecting or highlighting something very very good I find so I really do like the touchpad on this one so either side we have this little grill or vent I think it's more of a vent here because the speakers are downwards firing these ones the underside you'll find these four rubber feet so there are no intake vents along here but we have the gap down the side so this acts both as an intake exit vent as well for the heat or well, some of the heat's going to come out here it's going to be sucked in from the sides and then the speakers downwards firing ones that sound is going to transmit through and out the bottom. So that is why you shouldn't really block this. So you shouldn't use it on a bed. And the underside can get a little warm, but I'll get onto the thermals later on. But let's have a look at the internals. So they've upgraded a couple of things here with the cooling. This is slightly different to the previous gen models. And they've increased the amount of fins inside where the fans are. So there's two fans here. So this one does vent out there. And this is venting, I believe, out this side. This one bringing the cold air in. And I'll get onto that. I'll show you a bit about the performance. Will it fiddle thermal throttle? It does actually thermal throttle. They keep the temperatures in check. They do throttle it down a little bit. So here is the MVME drive. That is a Samsung. And I'll get onto the speeds of that one too. And our speakers. So there are two downwards firing ones on each side, a larger and a smaller one. These speakers sound good, but they do lack a little bit in volume. I wish they were somewhat louder than what they are. So what is upgradable here? Well, only this. 
you can just remove and swap out and add a larger NVMe drive. The wireless card, I believe, is part of the motherboard. It's hidden underneath here. You can see the antenna lines. This right here is the little pop-up camera. And the battery, you could unplug it, unscrew it, and replace it if you needed to do so. Gaining access is not difficult. It's just all the torque screws around the outside, which are the T5s, and this just pries right off. And what about our webcam? This is just above the number seven key. What is that like? Here's a sample of it. And this is my biggest complaint, which is the camera location. So still down in the keyboard and it's hidden away. So that's great for privacy, but it's got that horrible angle that it's looking up your neck, up your nose kind of angle here. And the quality of it, it's quite grainy. It doesn't look that great. And I do have some bright lights on here at the moment with this one. Now the microphone quality, that is great. So the mics are good, that has improved. And if you're typing on the keyboard at the same time, you do get a little bit of that coming through the sound of the keys being pressed through the microphones, but it's not as bad as other notebooks I've heard. So really, I hope in the future of models that they can shift this webcam, put it in the top bezel. So very nice touch screen on this one. We've got a resolution of 3000 times 200. So images look very sharp. We've got a nice amount of desktop space. And look at these thin bezels, they are really good. They are just five millimeters, the top and the sides. Really good there. And the touch accuracy and the response of the screen, excellent, no problems using it. And when you tap on it, like now, you can see it does wobble around a little bit, you're always going to get that, but the hinge is quite stiff with this one. So looking at some of my sample images, it's just a great screen all around. Touch response, glossy, so it will reflect a lot, of course, that is bound to happen. This is 13.9 inches too, by the way, so I like the size of it. Three by two aspect ratio. So just play a short video here. And brightness, maximum brightness, right up now to this is close to 500 nits. And then down to a quite a dull, only about five nits then of brightness. So that is good to use, say you're on an airplane in the cabin, you don't want to burn your eyes out, you can lower that brightness right down. And then our color coverage of the screen. So sRGB of 98%, NTSC is 69%, Adobe RGB 75%, P3 is 74%. So it's not bad for this type of screen and panel and IPS and having that 75% Adobe RGB, but I would like to see a little bit higher values in their up and coming newer flagships. Maybe they will switch over to OLED in the future, who knows? onto our audio performance. So the downwards firing speakers, there's four of them in total. They do sound good, they have a bit of bass. If there's one area of criticism, and that's the loudness, they could to me be just a little bit louder, but here they are at 100% volume. When you first fire up the MateBook X Pro, you are greeted with a couple of pre-installed applications, and one of them is a user guide, the other is PC Manager, which you can use to connect up your Huawei phone if you happen to have one with this. Now, of course, you can uninstall this, but there's only just a few bloatware applications that it does have. So the drive on board with this particular model here is a Samsung, and this is one terabyte. So they have partitioned the drive as follows. We've got 119 gigabytes for our Windows partition, and then 814 for data, which is a good idea, I guess, because if you do do a factory reset and you've got all your documents and your files and programs on data installed there, then you won't lose them if you only, of course, reset the C partition where Windows is. Now, the drive speeds, very good. This is a very fast drive, as you'd expect, and it is a Samsung. So it's basically the equivalent of a 970 Evo, but it's the OEM version that the manufacturers install. So excellent sequentials and the random reads and writes very quick there. So no bottlenecks there with the storage really quite fast and very pleased with those speeds. So under our device manager here, you can see that we do have the Wi-Fi 6, which is Intel's AX201. This is extremely quick, 200, over sorry, two gigabits per second. 2.3 gigabits is the theoretical maximum, and I'm achieving about 1.4 with my current router. With this one, it also does have Bluetooth 5.1, so that is excellent. The memory is running in dual channel and very fast speed here because it is the LP, so low power DDR4X spec of memory they're using in this, so this should definitely bend at the performance of the Iris XE graphics that we have on board with this particular high-end laptop. 
So plenty of RAM there. They have dedicated only 200 megabytes to that XE. And the version of Windows that it does run, just take a quick peek here under system that you can see there. It is Windows 10 Home version 2004. And just before I get onto the benchmarks, a little bit about this chipset. So this is the Core i7, the 1165G7, Tiger Lake, 10 nanometer, four cores, eight threads, maximum turbo is 4.7 gigahertz, and the graphics is the new gen of the Iris XE. So this is the latest, faster than the UHD graphics, because it does have the 96 executional cores here, the units. As you'd imagine, that this system does feel very quick and snappy. I'm on all the latest drivers too, by the way. I've updated everything. I've used Intel's driver update utility. Video playback. So this is a 140 megabit per second file. And it loads in and plays pretty much flawlessly there. A couple of little stutters in the start. It's very demanding, but not a problem. So media playback is really good. With that Iris XE, this is a 4K 60 frames per second now, and that runs, again, very, very smooth. There's no stutters, as expected. So I won't show documents, spreadsheets, basic kind of computing, because everything, it just flies through it. But I will show you some benchmarks, of course. With Cinebench R20, I have noticed that I'm getting scores here that should be a lot higher than this. We're missing out on some performance and getting close to 1,500 points. I find disappointing for this 11th gen Core i7. It should be higher. So why is that? Well, what is happening is I have noticed this, that it will run and peak at 91 degrees. It does run into thermal throttling here. So thermal throttling does take place. Now, the fan noise is excellent. It is so quiet, this particular laptop, even when pushed this hard. I think they could really ramp up the RPM and push those fans harder, get rid of that heat, and it wouldn't throttle as much as, as it is. So when you do anything really demanding, you're not getting the maximum, sadly, out of this Core i7 due to this thermal throttling. 3D Mark Night Raid. This is recommended for integrated graphics, which, of course, this has. And this score, the graphics score, is definitely a huge step up from the UHD and the UHD 620, the previous generations. But it could have done a little better, I feel. Again, because it hit the throttling, it throttled down the clocks, and the thermals got up there again to 91 degrees, pushing it hard. So it really doesn't like that. And that is why it could have done a little bit better here, I feel, with this score and the performance overall. Geekbench 5 score now. So an impressive single core score, just over 1,500. That's excellent, thanks to... The 4.7 gigahertz of the maximum turbo speed we have. Multi-core score here. This is good, very good, but I was expecting this to be over 5,000 for this particular chipset. Video editing now with Adobe Premiere Pro. This is a timeline that has 4K clips in it from my Sony A6400. 100 megabit files too, by the way, so they are high bit rate. And this playback at half of the playback resolution is reasonably good. It doesn't quite look like it's 30 frames per second, which this timeline is. I would say it's more about 24 or so, but I've noticed that with a simple video here, with a very simple cut and edits, there's no fancy transitions, there's no different layers, no color grading or anything like that. The performance is very, very good, better than expected. The Iris XE graphics certainly is helping out here. Now to see how long it will take to actually export one minute of footage. So you can see here one minute and eight milliseconds of footage. And I'll hit start on the timer and export. So that was about a second delay. And wow, this is looking very good. So this is a huge improvement over previous generations. Remember, this is a basic edit, okay? So there's no color grading going on. If you're color grading, then it will be a lot slower than this. If you're using a lot of transitions, very, very impressive. Wow. This is looking really good. Can't believe how fast this is. This is so much faster than the same spec I'm looking at now, reviewing in the Remy Book Pro 14, but with the MX450. That one takes three minutes for some reason. NVIDIA slows it down, and that was, safe to say, about 41 Maybe even 40 seconds. Wow, that is really quick for one minute of footage. On some gaming. So this I was really keen to see is just how does that Iris XE graphics perform? 
So recently I was just reviewing a mini PC with a UHD graphics and it was getting, well, something around 30 frames per second, really. And here we're looking at so much better. This is over double. So performance really has stepped up here. This is 720p, by the way, on the lowest graphics settings. And the pedestrian settings and the other visuals like the view distance isn't on the lowest. So let's see how it performs because this is, this is looking very, very promising. This is now... I would have to say close to, or maybe even, no, it seems about the same. It seems around about Vega, Vega 7 level. So AMD's integrated graphics have just been so much better. And finally, 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 Intel has stepped up here with their integrated graphics. And this is great to see. So good performance here from GTA 5. And take a look at this. I'm really surprised. This is the Witcher 3 on low settings, of course. And yes, it is 720p. But check it out. 55 frames per second, around an average of 50 or so frames per second. This is really impressive. This is a demanding game. So a AAA title, yes, it's an older one, is playable on the Intel Iris XE graphics. So well done, Intel. You have finally reached AMD's level, which they have been at for, oh, for many, many years now. But still, it is good to see and great that we can play on an Ultrabook such as the Mate X Pro, a game like The Witcher 3, 1080p, and somewhat playable. Well, 50 frames per second. I'm, I'm happy with that on this kind of laptop, definitely. That is great. Back to our temperatures now. So internal temps, the CPU gets up to 93 degrees. This is gaming after 45, almost 50 minutes, which is not good to see. So this has been thermal throttling, as I pointed out. Now, surface temperatures of the keyboard and the touchpad and around that area, the palm rest, they're actually very good. 42 degrees Celsius maximum is not bad at all for a very slim Ultrabook style notebook laptop that we have here. Considering I've seen many of them getting up to 50 degrees Celsius that I have recently reviewed, this is a good 8 degrees cooler. And how does it fare for Linux support here? So what I've done is boot up Linux Mint. This is the latest version from them. The touchpad does not work. Touchscreen does not work. Driver issues. Brightness control doesn't work either. The volume up and down does, however. So we have sound. Wireless is working. It's just the touch and touchpad and the screen that is not. So that will take a bit of hunting around for drivers. If you can possibly fix this, I don't know with this. So my time testing this lone unit from Huawei, I'm getting a battery life of around about nine hours, eight and a half to nine hours of mixed kind of use. So that is just documents, Chrome, YouTube, Amazon Prime video, and that is better. It's a better result than the Core i7, the 1165G7 powered Redmi Book Pro 14 that I'm also reviewing. That actually gets about an hour or so, or even two hours less. So this one's great for the battery life. I think it's well-tuned and it's efficient the whole thing the way they've got it set up here so great touch screen it's a bright screen i do like it the calibration 75 percent uh, of adobe rgb is good it's not bad and i do hope in the future they switch over to oled screens but that's probably going to push the price up a little bit speaking of which yes it is an expensive machine this does retail for around about 1500 euros so it isn't cheap but it has a premium top end design very nice keyboard touchpad and the speakers are good, but they could be a tad bit louder. Now, my biggest complaint about this is that webcam location. So having it there, it's not great. I really hope that they put it up here in the top bezel in the future models. If they do another revision of the design, which is now, I think, running for the third year. I think they've had this now since 2018, isn't it? So we're about the third year now. They do another rev revisement. Fix that. Put the camera up here, please, Huawei, if you're watching, you're listening. So excellent battery life, excellent design, excellent weight, very thin and light. One other area of criticism is the performance of that Core i7. It is good. It's a very quick, snappy, fast system, but I have seen from another model that I'm testing slightly better performance. This one seems to throttle down and have about approximately 15% less performance than the other notebook I'm looking at when it comes to like Cinebench scores and other of those synthetic benchmarks. And it seems because Huawei, they're throttling it. Throttling it down to control the thermals, I believe, and the fan noise. So fan noise is good. The thermals are not bad, as you saw from those temperatures, that it does, does get a little warm and hot, but I am seeing a good 10 degrees more on the other notebook that I'm testing with the same exact CPU as this one. So there we go. That's the full story of the MateBook X 
Pro, the 2021 edition. Thank you so much for watching this review. Do subscribe for more up and coming videos from me.